last um, article, Article 49, on petition of Maurice Friedman, 30 Hampton Meadows, Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842, and 25 registered voters, shall the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, raise and appropriate the amount of $200,000 to pay for a four-year lease of the property at 358 Lafayette Road, Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842, to be used as a senior center for the residents of Hampton. The requested sum will cover lease utility staffing and maintenance costs for the term of the lease. Not recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0. Not recommended by the Budget Committee 12-0. Fiscal impact note, the tax impact for the first year of the four-year lease at $50,000 per year is 1.8 cents per thousand dollars of um, valuation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 49? Get a motion. Uh, moved by Mr. Emmerich. Is there a second? Second to open discussion on, seconded by Ms. Andriozzi. Um, Mr. Friedman, as a petitioner, would you like to speak to? Mr. Friedman? Would you like to speak to your petition? Would you like to speak to your petition? Oh, uh, I'm Maurice Friedman, 30 Hampton Meadows, and uh, I spoke at the public hearing of the Budget Committee, and I described that as kind of a standoff. I couldn't hear them, and they weren't listening to me, so uh, this is my next shot at it. Uh, I apologize for not having a lot of detail. But uh, I've been working on that, and I've had some people come to me and said they're interested in working with me. So hopefully within a couple of weeks, we'll have a lot more detail. What I'd like to do is just brief, well, briefly in my words, talk about why a senior center and why I believe that is the responsibility of the town of Hampton to do something. And let me just read this. This will appear in the Hampton Union on Tuesday, according to Patrick. Through the ages, philosophers, religious spokesmen, geriatricians, as well as most individuals, agree that it's more fulfilling to do for others than to do for oneself. In practice, when people participate in groups, the broader need of various constituencies often get lost in the humdrum of dealing with budgets and ideologies. Hampton is a good example of this phenomenon. We allow our good intentions to be swamped by the local bureaucracy. Approaches to providing for these needs are sometimes attacked for faults in the proposal. I dream of a scenario in which community activists, instead of attacking, offer constructive criticism and offer to work jointly developing a solution to these unmet needs. I got involved in 2003. I found some stuff recently where there was activity in 1988. It's over 25 years ago. Since the submission of Warren Article 49 for an interim senior center, multiple activists have attacked, typically with distortions and untruths of past and current proposals. I will leave rebuttal of these to a later time. Today I'd like to just focus on the current proposal. After moving to Hampton in 1999, I was surprised to learn that there was no place that seniors could call home. Nothing fancy is needed, just a place where they could drop in and find other people. After further research, I learned that around 15% of the population was over 65. Anybody here over 65? And is expected to grow significantly in the future. I've seen estimates that say uh, in 20 years it's going to double. Multiple attempts to satisfy this need were unsuccessful. Fast forward to 2013. I learned that the property at 358 Lafayette Road in Hampton was vacant and available for sublease at below market rates. Following one-on-one -on -one discussions with Hampton town officials, 
and community activists, I embarked on a plan suggested by one of the selectmen and deemed worthwhile by Fred Welch, town manager, and Diana Morton, recreation director. Costs were estimated by the realtor and Diana Morton, $50,000 per year will add about $5.40 per year to the average homeowner's tax bill. That's not much more than what you pay for coffee at Starbucks. <clears throat> Two issues have been raised about the proposal. The first is, does Hampton have responsibility to provide for its seniors? And if so, what is the appropriate programming for this group? The question of town responsibility is a sticky one. Many have pointed out that senior centers exist and are town funded in places such as Dover, New Hampshire, Salem, New Hampshire, Raymond, New Hampshire, Exeter, New Hampshire, Amesbury, Massachusetts, Salisbury, Massachusetts, Seabrook, New Hampshire, as well as countless other towns in New England. Some of these towns are bigger than Hampton, but many have a tax base much smaller than Hampton. Some current and former town officials have taken the position that a senior center is not a town responsibility. I and many others believe that the town does have the responsibility to promote healthy aging. Remember that, healthy aging. And it's difficult to come up with a more cost-effective way than through a senior center. So those that challenge say this is a terrible proposal, that's great, come up with something else. The second issue raised is what happens in a senior center. Possibilities are endless and are dependent only on the effort of the community, particularly the seniors and supporting agencies. Activities taking place as we speak in senior centers all over the USA include fitness, Meals on Wheels, Book Club, Fix-It Programming, Sunshine Outreach, Health Education, Nutrition, Just Fun Classes, Financial Planning, Sewing and Knitting, Impromptu Games, Coral, Art, Computer, Juggling, Wellness Clinics, and the number one activity that drives the people, brings them to Senior Center, is socialization. Just think of it. Half of the 65-year-old in Hampton are female widows, as opposed to male widows. And uh, just imagine what it's like. Uh, there's a lot of low-income housing in Hampton, more than you may realize. And for the most part, a senior center would provide something that they do not now have. Let me finish by quoting. I just read a book by John Steinbeck, Travel Through Charlie. And on page 48, he reminds us that a sad soul can kick you, can kill you, quicker, far quicker than a germ. I think we have a responsibility to try to treat the sad soul syndrome. <clears throat> Steinbeck is not telling us to skip the flu shot. He's telling us that people need people. That is why a senior center is so important. Please do vote yes on Article 49 at the polls on Tuesday, March 11th. And to participate in this effort, and I can use some help, do send me an email at maury1, at M-A-U-R-Y, the digit one, at comcast.net. And I welcome all comments, constructive, deconstructive, things I should be doing that we're not doing, uh, other than going home. You may also call but I'd like to warn you that my hearing has suffered with age and email is easier for me. But if you don't have access to email, please do call me at 926-2878. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Friedman. Ms. Andriozzi?
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Arlene Andreozzi, 243 Winneconnet Road. This article was put forth by the efforts of Maury Freeman and 25 other registered voters. I had nothing at all to do with the article. I read it the other day and I said it's a great idea. The seniors have been looking for a place to meet since well before I was a senior. It's been voted down every year. No place has been adequate. Nothing made everybody happy. This place might be less than it's hoped for, but it's a start. It's less than other towns have. First, we need to ensure that the structure is suitable for a meeting place. But given that, the building will work. It's at the center of town. It's got great parking. The place is shared with a restaurant, an ice cream place, and a drugstore. It's kind of everything you need. They're all good neighbors. Each year, the townspeople, the taxpayers, are asked to consider a lot of votes, to spend a lot of money. The senior center usually takes a back seat. And that's, you got an infrastructure that needs to be repaired, a fire station that needs to be built or modified. The senior citizen will. You take care of what is needed first. There is no perfect year. This place is a start. It allows seniors a place to gather without arranging time from other organizations or clubs. It's a place to leave the chairs, the tables, and all the other equipment needed. Now it's time to assess the needs. It gives us time to assess the needs for future space. Maybe uh, the place will be too large. Maybe it'll be too small. Maybe there are other accommodations that will be needed. Maybe there's chances are, and it's not possible, but it could, excuse me, it could be that it doesn't get enough people interested and it has to be abandoned. With the lease, you're going to walk out of this. This town is not going to be responsible for a building, for maintenance, or whatever. The amount for this lease is $50,000 a year. I had a couple of different figures than Maury did. On a $350,000 house, the amount is $6.30 on that amount of house. It's not ideal. It's not what people might have hoped for, might have wished for. But it's a start. And that's what this article is about. I urge you to vote for this article on Election Day. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andriozzi. Just to follow up on um, Arlene's comment, as I get ready for these meetings, I, I like to go back and see what we were doing 50 years ago. And 50 years ago, Ken Malcolm, late Ken Malcolm, proposed a senior center for the town of Hampton. So when Arlene says this idea has uh, been considered year after year after year, uh, I can certainly vouch that it goes further back than 25 years and, and was a, a Warren article in 1964. Would you like to be heard now? My name is Catherine Joaquin, and I live at Two Fox Road. And I am presently the uh, president of the seniors. So I certainly agree with what Maury and Arlene just recited. There is a, uh, a real need for some place. We're not, we're not looking for the Taj Mahal. We're just looking for a little place where people can meet and have a little fun. And um, it's like therapy for people, you know? Gets them out of their house, like, like, uh, like um, uh, Arlene said and uh, they really develop good friendships. And a lot of times we have widows who come, or widowers who are really feeling very down, and uh, it's just what the doctor ordered for them. They come and they feel very welcome, and very um, people really uh, stretch their hand out to them and welcome them. And uh, it gives them a whole new lease on life. Because you know, there's nothing like company. It's awful to be home alone, and uh, staring at the four walls when you can be out having a little bit of fun it sure adds a little um, it adds years to your life and it also makes you much healthier so uh, we would love if you people would uh, vote on, on the uh, at the town meeting to um, to have this uh, 
go through. And I think it will be a big benefit to the town and maybe to all of you too someday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Moody. Art, Mo Art Moody, I don't know what happened in 1964. <clears throat> Didn't pass. I was down in Washington. <laughs> but uh, I know what happened 25 years ago. We voted 100000 to do the plans and the bid documents for a community center. And we have the plans. Over two years, they spent 70000 30000 was lapsed. And those plans get taken out every now and then whenever something like this comes up. They were to be built on the tennis courts. The tuck field with space left for a pool, indoor pool. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Uh, seeing uh, no one else, uh, Article 49 will appear on the, uh, on the ballot as printed. Before